presenting to you our research that is an epidemiological study on screening for cervical cancer by group 2. Introduction. What is cancer? Cancer is the uncontrolled growth of body cells and can start almost anywhere in the human body. When cancer develops in the cervix of the female, it is termed as the cervical cancer or cancer cervix. Cervix is the lowest part of the uterus that connects the body of the uterus to the vagina. Most cervical cancer originate in the area where the endocervix and ectocervix join. Cervical cancer is the fourth most common cancer in women worldwide and second most common cancer in women living in less developed regions. WHO estimates about 5,30,000 new cases of cervical cancer globally as of 2012 with approximately 2,70,000 deaths representing about 7.5% of all female cancer deaths. More than 85% of these deaths occurred in low and middle income countries. Cervical cancer can be prevented by vaccinating all females against HPVs and by screening and treating the precancerous lesions in women. In addition, if cervical cancer is detected early and treated in earlier stages, it can be cured. Symptoms of the disease include light bleeding between periods, menstrual bleeding that is longer than usual, bleeding after intercourse, douching, or public exams, increased vaginal discharge, pain during sex, and bleeding after menopause, amongst others. Scope of the study. Cervical cancer is one of those diseases that is differentially expressed among the poor, amongst the immigrants, and people who don't have access to healthcare. So if every woman is screened as recommended, the chances of getting cervical cancers would be almost down to zero. This study focused on the factors contributing towards preventing women from getting screened for cervical cancer. This study examined the problem for various aspects, namely women's knowledge level for the cervical cancer, the perception and attitudes towards it, and the level of cervical screening utilization, whether the cervical screening practices vary between the rural and the urban women, as well as the factors that function as barrier for utilization of cervical cancer screening practices. The foregoing aspects of the problem comprehensively covers the issue of the barriers to the cancer screening and to help the knowledge about cervical cancer screening and the barriers preventing it. Although these issues have been extensively studied in the developing world context, they have not been conclusively addressed within the study area, which is why the current study is necessary. This study was conducted with the objective of formulating the knowledge of women about cervical cancer, its screening, role of doctor, source of information, the reason for not undergoing screening if the women had not undergone testing for cervical cancer, and to analyze the necessary circumstances of the same. The specific objective of this study were to interpret the knowledge about cervical cancer among women attending the OPDs of the hospital attached to the University of Perpetual Health System Delta. To explain about the awareness of cervical cancer, screening on these women and facilities available for it. And to evaluate the frequency of screening for identifying presence of cervical cancer. As well as to explore the source of information, the role of healthcare providers who come in contact with women in hospitals. To identify factors affecting uptake of cervical screening and to develop a comprehensive assessment to capture the precise hotspot of screening practices. To distinguish any aggression of socioeconomic, demographic or health variables over geographic space that tends to manifest a spatial pattern or a spatial clustering to analyze the misconceptions and correct it accordingly. Our null hypothesis is there are no barriers or difficulties present in screening for cervical cancer, while our alternative hypothesis is there are barriers or difficulties present in screening for cervical cancer. Good morning, everyone. So we will be going on the review of related literature. So many, as far as the many studies have been done before on the screening of prevalent cancer. So the first research we have, it is from the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology. It was done in 1981 by Adult Stoll. So this, according to this journal, Cervicography is used to study the presence of cervical cancer and it is far more advanced and efficient to coploscopy with respect to the visual magnification and the resolution. The papanicolaou test is also used to identify the precancerous lesion within the cervix of the female. I mean, the precancerous cells can be detected by the pap smear test. The second research is from the IARP scientific publication, which was done in January 1992. It states that the epidemiology of the cervical cancer has a strong link with marital status, religion, and the sexual pattern. The major, major infectious agent is human papillomavirus, which, which is also known as HPV. The, there are many, many other causes such as cigarette smoking, nutritional deficit, and the most common, the use of oral contraceptive. This research also states that not only the female factor is responsible, but the male factor is also responsible. The third research we have is from gynecologic oncology, which was done in the year 1989. According to this research, parametrial lymph nodes are used in the detection, which are said to be associated with the cervical cancer. According to the seminar in radiation oncology, oncology, chemoradiation therapy is used as the treatment of cervical cancer. Cisplatin, epirubicin, and the combination of mitomycin along with 5 fluorouracil are effective in the radiation therapy. Now, moving further for the methodology part, cervical cancer is one of the most common worldwide and the leading cause of mortality in women. Now, how is cervical cancer identified? Ask the patient if he had any kind of history of cervical cancer or metastasis. Ask the patient about the process and diagnosis about the previous test. If the diagnosis found with a cervical cancer is yes, confirm with the use of colposcopy or cervicography. For more detailed information, ask about her marital status, religion, and her sexual status. Ask about the screening if she had done before. Ask about the past smear test if she knows. If, if yes, do further diagnosis. If not, explain briefly to your patient. Ask about the human papillomavirus and its awareness. 
because major infectious agent is human papilloma virus. If she had done pap smear test before, ask if it was painful. Is the screening available? Is it safe and harmless? If your patient haven't done screening before, ask the reason. If there is a fear of pain or anything else, if not done, explain the procedure of screening. If there is limited information on cervical cancer in the community, if yes, explain her briefly. If no, then go further. What are the main reasons you never had cervical cancer diagnosis? Ask her various reasons. If 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 the reasons are not suitable, explain and guide. So all of our data was collected through the Google form questionnaire that we made before, and maybe ask our participants about their name, email address, age, sex, profession, religion, marital status, etc. We ask our participants some generalized questions which are related to clinical screening of cervical cancer, such as. Can screening help in preventing cervical cancer? Screening, if it is free, available, or harmless. Fear of pain is one of the reasons for not having cervical cancer screening. According to you, screening is more important or not? Have you ever had a gynecological examination? Have you ever had a Pap smear test? What if you are tested with cervical cancer? Did you take the vaccine for human papilloma virus? Pap smear test is painful or not? If you have done it before, there is limited information on cervical cancer in the community. Is it true or false? What are the main reasons? You never had a cervical cancer diagnosis. These were some questions that we have asked in our questionnaire. On the basis of the Google form questionnaire and the analysis we have done, so we have got 50 to 60 responses. Most of them were women, and the target population was women of different ages. The women from India of different age groups are selected to do the research on screening of cervical cancer of specially selected population of different professions. So we have done the grouping, such as age 18 to 25, we got 16 responses. 28 to 40, we got 29 responses. Age 41 to 55, we got 19 uh, nine responses, and age above 55, we got six responses. Most of the people uh, from the age groups of 28 to 40 are more responsive for the research, and most are accepting for the for the screening of cervical cancer. Hello, I'm Jan Angel, and today I'll be discussing about the data analysis and processing. The researchers here have collected the data and analyzed it to gain the information on the data. The statistical methods used to analyze the data are pie chart and bar diagram. To understand why is screening for cervical cancer necessary, researchers have processed the data in steps such as data collection, data preparation, and input processing, and others. Next is dummy table, and this is how the dummy table looks. It is a virtual table where you can perform a select event if it doesn't exist. It has empty cells which are to be filled after the data analysis. It outlines how the result of the trial will be reported. Next is inclusion criteria. It basically includes factors that are generalizable. Researchers have included factors like age, female, women who have a cervix, and others. Next is exclusion criteria. It is simply any characteristics or features that a potential population might have that would disqualify them from participating in the study. Researchers have excluded factors such as males, women without a cervix, or women who have had a removal of the cervix surgically, and other factors. Next is interpretation of the results. From the research, we can interpret it that although many women know about the screening of the cervical cancer, but its ever ability is very less and that remains a major concern right a wide and effective spread of awareness is needed about the cervical cancer and its screening so that many can get the screening test done also public health policy of the government play a major role in providing the awareness and necessary availability of the screening test thank you